Well, hello there, folks, and welcome into today's video. Thanks so much for joining me, as always, and everybody that is in the TTCF squad, uh, welcome. Today is a video that you guys are absolutely going to love. We are doing a major, major update here on the Tattooed Chef. What is going on here? Things like that. I haven't talked about this one in detail in a little while now. And so I thought every month, uh, since it's obviously a really, really important stock and uh, one that is, uh, you know, I've definitely, um, you know, in backing in a huge way and like staking my personal brand behind this stock, I thought, let me start doing a monthly update with this stock because there's always moving parts here. It's definitely not a stock that there's updates every day on or something like that. But absolutely, there's some major stuff going on here that I want to show you guys. And uh, we're going to talk about what's going on with the company fundamentals. We're going to talk about the stock price. We're going to talk about, you know, a, a lot of different things in this video here today. So I hope you guys enjoy this. As always, if you clicked on this, you're obviously interested in Tattoo Chef Stock TTCF. And I appreciate you being here. As always, all I ask in return is that you smash that thumbs up button. That, that helps us out in the little YouTube algorithm, okay? And uh, maybe other folks that are interested in this stock can go ahead and see a video like this. And... Um, learn a little bit more about the chef okay now just so you guys know here we got a seven day free trial for the private stock group right now this is literally the first time i've ever announced this if you want to grab one of those spots before they're gone go ahead and check out the pinned comment i know there's a ton of people that have always been interested in the private stock group but haven't really known like you know what, what do you get as part of it things like that so that's why we're doing the free seven day trial so hope you guys absolutely love that learn lots and uh, take advantage of that and once again if you want access to that seven day free trial check out the pinned comment down there enjoy that guys already so i want to start out here all right now this is around product innovation now in most food companies innovation uh that's not even like a word most food companies know right like you know the the, the biggest thing like a food company or drink company knows is maybe like they change the sizing of their product maybe they make the packaging a little bigger a little smaller like that's innovation for food companies okay the chef is a whole different beast. I mean, you look at how many different products this company has launched over the years. Now, something very, very important, by the way. Oh, my gosh. The Huevos Rancheros Bowl. Holy smokers, that ain't no jokers. Of everything I've tried, that's probably my favorite right now. That thing is absolutely delicious, okay? Something very important to keep in mind here is these products, a lot of times you won't see them on store shelves for a year or two down the road. For instance, like the enchilada bowl, mac and cheese bowl, we just started seeing those really in 2020 in a lot of stores, right? And so keep in mind with a lot of these different products, some of them you'll see on store shelves now, right? Like the plant-based burrito bowl, that one, from my understanding, is insanely popular. I love that one as well. But when it comes to a lot of these items, you're not going to see it in 2021 if it just came out in 2021. You'll see it on actual store shelves in like 2022, 2023, things like that, right? And so that's just a little food for thought there. The Asi bowls or Kai bowls, whatever you want to call them, okay? The Asi bowls, you know, 2019 was were technically launched, but you didn't really start seeing those on store shelves till 2020 and then this year in 2021. So there's some food for thought here, but the company is innovating at a rapid pace coming out with new products. And uh, I, I, I don't see them slowing down any time soon, to be completely honest. They're just going to keep moving and moving and moving at light speed. Now, there's a massive opportunity here for the Tattoo Chef. If we look at the frozen food category, okay, the frozen food category, $42 billion, b -b -b billion dollar opportunity just in the United States alone, right? That's Tattoo Chef's opportunity there, $42 billion. Something important over here, the number of consumers who say convenience had a significant impact on their food purchase decision has grown from 49% in 17 to 57% in 2019, which is obviously something that bodes very well for TTCF stock, right? I mean, you want to, that's just like, you know, you convenient, if the more convenience folks are looking for, the, the more something like Tattoo Chef is going to thrive, right? Because their, their middle name is convenience. And so the, the long-term opportunity just in the frozen food category, just in the United States alone is absolutely so much larger than this company. It's hard to even explain. Never mind the global frozen food market, which is going to be approaching 400 billion within the next year or two. Okay. The numbers are gargantuan for this company. And if they just get a small piece of that pie, my gosh, are they going to be highly successful? Now, not just frozen foods, but plant-based foods, which is where Tattoo Chef really plays. Plant-based foods are expected to reach $162 billion by 2030. 
And I wouldn't be surprised if that number is actually end up being low. I think things might even you know grow faster than that. This is a total global plant based retail market size. 2020 it was 29 billion. It's expected to grow to 100 and almost 62 billion dollars by 2030. The plant based food market, in my opinion, is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger over the coming years. And the companies that are are, are in the best position to thrive here are going to be the companies that grow into 10 billion dollar type market caps or 10 tens of billions, or dare I even say 100 billion type market caps in the future, right? Those companies, and and if I think about some of the companies that are in the forefront, Tattoo Chef comes to mind, obviously Beyond Meat comes to mind, Impossible Foods comes to mind. All three of those companies are just in an absolutely phenomenal position. All three of those companies are at different sizes, but they're all in a dang good position to absolutely build giant food, giant corporations here, all right? Now, keep in mind, revenue growth, 52% 52% year over year in the first half of, of 2021 versus the first half of 2020. 52%. Look at this established brand. This is really like the tattooed chef brand, right? In the first half of 21 versus the first half of 2020, 82% year over year growth. That is insane. You know, you're not going to be able to find many food or drink companies that are growing anywhere remotely close to these sorts of clips. And keep in mind, you know, Tattoo Chef, I, I know some individuals out there like to act like their, their numbers aren't large or something like that. Keep in mind, Tattoo Chef's going to likely do multi, multi nine figures of revenue this year. Never mind in future years. That's this year. So it's not like these are minuscule numbers. Now, when you're doing multi nine figures of revenue, you're building out uh, quite a business. All right. Over a hundred million dollars in a cash balance, two hundred and seventy-five thousand square feet of manufacturing. Now their capacity is to quadruple, quadruple in twenty twenty-one. They're they're ready to scale this baby up to you know a billion-dollar type revenue numbers over the coming years. They obviously have tremendous opportunities for strategic M and A, like they obviously did the New Mexico Foods deal. And when you have nine figures of cash in your balance sheet, and you have one of the hottest brands in the entire world when it comes to the food space, yeah, things are gonna, uh, you know, the, the M and A opportunities are definitely gonna be there for you, right? They obviously launched their first national media campaign very recently. Their branded store count is to triple in 2021, and they've created 35 new product innovations here just in 2021 so far. We're not even at the end of the year yet, right? I mean, these numbers are absolutely unbelievable. Like I said, th- this is the main number, in, in my opinion, that I look at out of everything. The established brand and where the growth is there. And like I said, these numbers... <sighs> You know, their holy smoke is ain't no joke is numbers now. Now, look at this. There's The management team is running so much faster than a lot of folks expected. Even myself, that somebody that's a bull, they're just ahead of schedule. And that is something I, I value in a huge way when it comes to if I'm thinking about a stock that I'm going to stake my brand behind and uh, talk about, you know, quite a bit and make everybody know that, hey, this is my stock, right? Uh, I got to see the management team in a place where I feel like they're going to execute even better than I think, right? Because you look at this, right? 2019 total stores, 1,600. Then 4,200 in 2020. First half of 2021, 8,300. They had a goal for 2021 of 10,000 stores. Now just in 3Q 2021 alone, they're expected to be in over 12,000 stores. What, you know, substantially ahead of their, their goals. And what even folks at, like myself that are very, very bullish on the stock, they're even ahead of those numbers as well. And so this is really good news because keep in mind, for Tattoo Chef, they have two main battles they have to fight, right? One is to get in stores. And the second is to have their products sell so dang well that they keep getting more and more SKUs in those stores. So all of a sudden you might start in a new store with four SKUs or six SKUs or something like that. And over time, you get eight SKUs, 10 SKUs, 12, 14, 16, 20, 30. Keep in mind, in the frozen food category, if you go down freezer aisles of, of big-time grocery stores, you're going to find a lot of the bigger brands in, the, in the, just the freezer aisle alone, which this company is going to become a lot more, a lot more than just a frozen foods company over time, right? But when, when you think about it from, from that context, uh, you know, frozen food companies that are giants have 30, 40, 50, 60 SKUs in these stores. And Tattoo Chef is going to get to that place over time, and that's the second battle they're fighting. But the first is they got to get in the stores, right? You got to get that distribution to at least have that opportunity in there way ahead of schedule, which is absolutely 
phenomenal. So in 2020, Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco, Target, places like that, obviously they're customers. Now, something very, very important to keep in mind is look at somebody like a Target, right? If we go back to late 2020, I used to see two, maybe four SKUs in Target stores. You fast forward now, October you know, of, of 2021, and in a lot of Target stores, you're going to see six SKUs, eight SKUs, 10 SKUs. And I hear there might even potentially be more SKUs coming in Target stores. And so this is just some food for thought where it's like, yeah, they, they might have been in that store last year, but they had a select, uh, you know, a very, very small amount of products. And now that's just expanding. And then imagine where it's going to be in three years from now five years from now, things like that, right? Sam's Club, for instance, a lot of, you know, products were just on trial back in 2020. Now out here in Vegas, I'm seeing in the Sam's Club stores, a lot of Tattoo Chef products in the actual aisles, which if you're in the main aisles in the frozen food section, that usually means you're a keeper, okay? If you're on the the end caps, that means they're trying you out. If you're in the middle, that means you're likely a keeper. So this is just some food for thought here. 2021, obviously, they're getting in all these big dogs. Kroger's the biggest of the bigs. I mean, you know, if you're thinking about a grocery store, you got to be in as Kroger because there's nobody bigger than Kroger, right? Albertson, Safeway's huge. Whole Foods, Sprouts, all these players are awesome. But this is obviously the, the main big dog that I'm focused on. And then this would be kind of number two that I'm focused on. And those products are just barely starting to show up in, in Kroger stores like Smith's, which is owned by Kroger out here in Vegas. I just, uh, you know, bought some pizzas recently, Tattoo Chef pizzas from the store that I just started seeing. So keep in mind, you're seeing these partnerships, but, you know, the products actually on the store shelves are just barely starting or going to start over the next couple months. So that's just some more food for thought there. In some of the Whole Foods, I still can't even find the product yet. So obviously that changes over time. You announce the partnerships and then there's like, like usually several months of time in between there in, in which, you know, they, they got to send the product to the new retailers and then the stores actually have to make the space on the store shelves and things like that and kick old dogs out of there. This is this might be the most important slide and this is probably the, the most exciting slide for me to share here in regards to Chef, okay? If you're wondering, are they just getting in a bunch of stores um, and the product's not moving? No, okay? And by the way, you don't get in a bunch of stores unless your product's moving. You have to have the volume in other stores to be able to show the next you know, store, the next company, like, hey, here's where we're moving. You want us in there? And the other, the other you know, companies and the other stores are like begging, we need you in there, right? So three of the top 10 items, including the number one and number two since launch in March of 2021 for plant-based frozen entrees. So here's Tattoo Chef comes in and we're like, yeah, we're just going to king all you guys up, okay? We're, we're the kings here. We got the number one and the number two top items in the plant-based frozen entrees category and the number 10 as well. If I had to guess, I would guess one of those items was probably the uh, plant-based burrito bowl because I know that one sells very, very dang well. And I'm not sure what the other one is, but yeah, you know, look at that. You know, they pass up Stouffer's, Amy's, Healthy Choice, Lean Cuisine, and, and all these other companies. And it's like, yeah, yeah, and we're just going to exceed all you guys, right? And so that's massive. You want to see dominance. It, you know, one of the, the reasons I'm so convinced on this stock is not just because of the huge opportunity in plant-based foods over the next decade plus, right? And the huge opportunity just in, uh, you know, for this company overall and the management team, things like that. But it's 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 things like this, that they just are outselling their competitors and just completely dominating. And that's something I like to see. This is a slide that, you know, short sellers don't want to look at. They don't want to look at this slide or people that are negative on this company. They're going to, you know, disregard this and act like it's not there, right? When this is the the biggest, this is the biggest slide you can possibly look at. If I think about most of my, you know, very best investments ever, it was companies that they had a huge dominance over their competitors in whatever market they were competing in where it's like it's not even really close and that's what we're seeing with the chef when you got the number one and number two and you're just a new dog in there think about how many people don't even know tattoo chef yet imagine how many people are going to know tattoo chef in three years from now five years from now you know this is just some food for thought here obviously with a long-term investment that i don't even think hits a lot of folks uh, you know heads that are that are short sellers on the stock are negative right this here is arguably just as big of a slide Velocity's 60% plus above nearest top 10 competitors for plant-based frozen entrees, all right? You know, you want to see dollar velocity much higher than other companies, and it's not even close. Most folks would consider the the main competitors long-term for Tattoo Chef to be the Sweet Earth Company and this Purple Carrot Company, okay? And maybe Amy's, but honestly, you know, those two are kind of the main ones. But look at how... Uh, look at how far above 
Tattoo Chef is TTCF than every single one of their competitors. The dollar velocity is not even remotely close. Not even remotely close between these other companies. And most of these other companies have far more uh, you know, experience in, in brand worthiness in past years. But Tattoo Chef's just coming in and just saying, <laughs> you guys don't know what you're messing with here, okay? That the numbers speak for themselves in the stock. You know, we can talk about this, we can talk about that, but at the end of the day, you look at the numbers, and the numbers show us that they are dominating on a fundamental basis. And slides like this make me want to buy more of the stock than ever. Now, operations overview. Italy. They're increasing their blending capacity in California. They have additional equipment to continue to increase capacity in Albuquerque. The R&D is underway on new plant-based items to fill capacity. And then with their Karsten facility, they expect to commence production by the end of Q4 2021 or early Q1 2022. As far as that goes, like I said, capacity to quadruple in 2021. So this company is, is you know, they're ready to rock and roll for 22. And I already heard that they might be looking for more space. We'll see about that, okay? But yeah, uh, you know, 100,000 plus square feet in Italy, 50,000 plus square feet in California, and then 118 thousand square feet plus in the Karsten facility there, right? Gluten-free, soy-free, plant-based meat production, new capabilities in 2021, alternative tortillas, snacks, burritos, handheld quesadillas, enchiladas. Oh my gosh. I mean, oh, the the opportunity in front of this, this company over the next five, 10 years is just off the charts. Ridiculous. Now, as far as this year, 2021, this year that we're, we're wrapping up here, right? Revenue is expected to be between 235 to 242. Don't be surprised if those numbers end up beating. And um, over time, I mean, imagine where the revenue growth is going. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that within the next five years, if not within the next four years, this company will be at a billion dollars plus in revenue per year and still growing rapidly from there. Gross margins this year expect to be between 16% and 22%. In my opinion, gross margin is going to go 30% plus long term for this company. No doubt in my mind. When I think about their product, when I think about how they're vertically integrated, which is going to give them huge margin expansion over time because they're completely a vertically integrated business, right? When I think about the pricing power this company already has, but will have more so in future years over their competition and the strong brand they're building here, there's no doubt in my mind that they're going to reach 30% plus gross margin long term. And, and so the profitability of this business model is going to be crazy. And if you're talking about, you know, a day where they're doing a billion, two billion, three billion dollars of revenue, and you're talking about hitting 30% type gross margins, if not higher than that, whew, that's all I have to say about that. That's a, that's a holy smoke is ain't no joke as type numbers in terms of profitability that starts rolling in for this business. And as those profits get bigger and bigger, if they want to buy out other companies, for other brand reasons, right? Maybe they want to buy out something in the drink space that's growing rapidly over there. And they want to make a purchase over there and say, hey, we're not just going to be a food company. We're going to be a drink company as well. Don't rule something like that out, right? Or they obviously are going to need to continue to increase the capacity, right? If they're going to do a billion dollars of revenue, two billion, three billion, they're going to keep scaling the business over the next five, 10 years. They're going to need more, more capacity, right? And when you're throwing off the profits, I believe this company is going to be doing long term. Uh, yeah, you're going to be able to make those purchases very, very easily, right? Now, let's talk about the stock price for a moment here. So as far as market cap's been trading somewhere around one and a half billion recently, and, you know, as far as the stock price goes, in the short term, it is what it is. It's just, a, it's kind of a, a floundering stock price. Let's call it that, right? At the end of the day, you know, short term stock prices are going to be short term stock prices, right? Look at the company's fundamentals. Look at what they're doing. Look at the, the way they're scaling this business. Look at the numbers coming out of this company. Look at everything like that. And it's hard not to be absolutely amazed. And think about the brand they're building long term. And that's why there's no doubt in my mind that this company is going to grow into a 5, 10, if not you know, over a $10 billion company over the next 5, 10 years and grow into a food giant that we have not really seen this type of innovation or, uh, in the food space in quite a while, to be honest, from a company like this. And in my opinion, the small caps are going to move at some point here. They cannot stay down forever, right? And Tattoo Chef would definitely fall into this category of small caps. Now, keep in mind, 
Tattoo Chef, as the company gets bigger and bigger, could be included long term in the S&P 500 and, um, you know, other other indexes as well over time. So that's just some more food for thought there around money that will have to come to Tattoo Chef one way or another over time as far as the stock price goes. Right. But when I look at this stock price, I look at this and I'm just seeing a stock that, you know, I'm going to be looking at in a few years from now, it's going to be 40, 50, 70, 80 dollars in long term, I think 100 dollars plus for the stock price overall. There's no doubt in my mind, it's just a floundering stock price right now. Wall Street, it, it, this, is a, this is a super under the radar stock. This is not some Goliath company. In my opinion, th- two years from now, Wall Street's gonna know about this stock. The, the funds will know about this stock as they start to scale. And then especially as this company gets over a half a billion dollars of revenue, it's gonna be impossible for Wall Street not to think about this stock, wanna own this stock and be talking about this stock, right? And uh, be also in a lot of funds. As far as if people don't want to buy the stock, you know, it doesn't mean a dang thing to me. The only thing I don't like is if people speak down about the stock without really knowing uh, the full story here. And it's it's unfortunate because that happens with every stock. It used to happen with Tesla all the time back in the day, where the shorts and people that were negative would just throw out some metric. Oh, it's trading, uh, it's trading at thirty billion dollar market cap, forty billion dollar market cap. It's more than GM and Ford, and they're like, you know, they just you, they just throw something out there, right? And so with Tattoo Chef, people, uh, I think so certain individuals just aren't very educated on this stock. They don't really n- know the fundamental story, what's actually going on here. And they choose to speak on the stock. And, and you know, those folks just sh- shouldn't speak on it at the end of the day. Like, that's my only thing. It's like, if you don't want to own it, whatever. You know what I mean? But don't don't come um, talk trash about this stock when you don't even really know what's going on here. So that's kind of my two cents there. I'm obviously a huge believer in the chef long term and short term. And uh, I can't wait to see what this baby does over the coming years. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget free seven day trial for the private stock group. If you haven't got to check that out yet, it'll be the pinned comment down there. Best of luck with that with filling out your application. And I uh, can't wait to see you in there. Have a great day. Oh,